hi, uh, I'm Juma Sen and uh, I teach at uh, OP Jindal Global Uni University. I teach at their law school uh, and I'm currently also the founder and one of the conveners of the Indian Feminist Judgments uh, project. project uh, so what we uh, essentially try to do is first to underst understand the uh, reason why we need a feminist judgments project uh, we we as in feminist lawyers judges jurists uh, uh, academics they always they have traditionally they have produced uh, critiques of feminist critiques or critiques of generally critiques of uh, judgments uh, judicial pronouncements uh, what the project does is they try to show how uh, a judgment could be written, uh, could be written better or could be written differently by using a feminist lens. Uh, usually what the, the, the usual methodology of such judgment writing or the feminist judgments project uh, is uh, uh, someone which who is a commentator situates the original, situates the original judgment in its very particular locations in the sense uh, uh, sort of locates that judgment in its history in its politics uh, in the you know in the uh, in the social context and even in its legal context as well uh, and then traces how the rewritten judgment kind of makes a departure from the original judgment uh, also the commentator also tries to uh, understand what uh, if there there were gaps in the rewriting process uh, uh, and why those gaps could not be fulfilled. In other words, the commentator's job is also to understand the methodological constraints of feminist uh, judgment writing. Uh, and the commentator is, for in order to understand that, the commentator, commentator is supposed to be in constant conversation with the judgment writer. Uh, what the judgment writer does is, this is the other second component of the uh, project, the judgment writer actually rewrites the judgment or as uh, feminist, uh, uh, you know, feminist lovingly uh, call it rights as an R I G H T rights the judgment. Uh, so uh, this is this project is nothing new actually. Uh, there is this sort of like traces from uh, to, uh, the Women's Court of Canada in 2008, where a bunch of Canadian uh, legal practitioners, uh, 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 feminist uh, scholars, they all came together uh, to essentially show how they were very angry with the, uh, with the way the Canadian Supreme Court was interpreting Article 15 in substantive equality and uh, they saw that substantive equality was not uh, interpreted given the judicial interpretation that it so rightly deserved. So they wanted to show how substantive equality could have a judicial expression. Uh, so the Women's Court of Canada was, uh, was set up and uh, judgments, they, they wrote around eight, 8 or 10 uh, uh, judgments on, equ on the equality provisions of, the, of, uh, of, of Canadian cases. Uh, then after, after a while the idea that, kind, that idea migrated uh, to the shores of uh, England and the, the first feminist judgments project was set up uh, in uh, England with House of Lords decisions uh, primarily. Uh, from UK it has migrated to, and from England rather it has migrated, there, there's an Irish and Northern Irish project, there is a Scottish project underway, uh, it moved to Australia, there's an Australian Feminist Judgments project, uh, in US there has been several Feminist Judgments project, not just the Feminist Judgments project, but there has been Feminist Tax Law Judgments project, Feminist Tort Law Judgments project and so on and so forth. Uh, the Indian project kind of borrows uh, from the sister projects across other jurisdictions and the Indian project uh, is also, it also happens to be the first uh, project in the Feminist Judgments project in the Global South and indeed the very first in uh, South Asia. Uh, so uh, what we did uh, earlier, we had a call for paper, uh, call for proposals, uh, where this was sometime around last year where we selected a bunch of proposals uh, and we we were we did not give any indication uh, that what is an ideal judgment that deserves a feminist scrutiny uh, it was uh, it it it's because, because we wanted also wanted to sort of break the notion of canon uh, because uh, what is considered as a landmark judgment may not be considered as a landmark, landmark judgment and what exactly is a landmark judgment judgment in any case uh, so we received a good number of proposals and then we shortlisted a bunch uh, but as it happened happens uh, you know in such cases because the uh, usual understanding is uh, 
uh, you know, gender or feminism is something to do with matrimonial laws and criminal laws. Beyond that, there is really no, uh, you know, there's no approach or there's, there's no reach of uh, feminism. So uh, we were uh, not happy with that, of course. So we reached out to uh, our, you know, like, you know, friends, colleagues, peers in, you know, in the academy as well as the legal profession, even even judges in some, in some cases, uh, asking them to identify tax law cases which could be rewritten, contract law cases which could be rewritten, tort law cases which could be rewritten. Uh, so now uh, we have kind of like the, the we have we have a list of around 40 judgments that we are workshopping with. Uh, in May this month, we formally inaugurated the, pro the project with, uh, you know, with around we workshop there are 27 judgments and uh, uh, the, this was around 15th 16th may and the, that workshop was primarily a methodological workshop in the sense that we had asked uh, uh, you know the judgment writers and commentators to come with uh, a long abstract identifying essentially three things one why that particular uh, judgment why did they want to rewrite a particular judgment in other words to identify the gaps existing gaps in a particular judgment which could benefit from a feminist rewriting uh, second how exactly that those gaps could be filled uh, because something which is a big you know you know one may aspire to do a lot of things correct a lot of wrongs in a judgment but there there is also an inherent contradiction between uh, uh, not contradiction but it's more complex i think uh, uh, there, there, there there is a there's a there's a limitation to the legal technical approach uh, uh, not everything can be translated in in the language of law uh, you know there are barriers of uh, you know precedent for example how does a feminist rewriting uh, envisage the question of precedent how they deal with it tackle with it for example um, so this is the, this is what this was the, the, the second requirement was uh, to sort of identify like how uh, she would rewrite and the third one was to anticipate the challenges um, that such rewriting process uh, might uh, throw up uh, we had the workshop, uh, we had a, like, like the first day of the workshop was a methodological work. It, it, it was la largely dealt with like methodologies of like, basically feminist legal methods and methodology of uh, feminist judging. Uh, and then uh, we second workshop is scheduled to take place in October. Uh, it's barely uh, less than two weeks now, 6th and 7th October. Uh, and uh, where these uh, judgment writers and uh, commentary writers who had come for the May workshop and a bunch of like other judgment writers and commentary writers who we had approached later, all of them would come with their drafts of rewritten judgments and commentaries and get pointed feedback and critique. Uh, we expect to have a number of publications sometime around uh, next year uh, uh, and we have already signed up with uh, with Subban and uh, Indian Law Review and we are in the process of having conversations with a couple of other uh, publishers as well uh, and I think uh, it's uh, it's this a project like this is uh, useful because uh, in the longer run uh, like it has happened in the other projects in for example uh, in UK and also uh, in Australia, th this project has had uh, some sort of a bearing on judicial training and more importantly, it has also uh, opened up questions on diversity, like what you know, great things diversity may do, not just diversity of opinion, diversity of judicial thinking, judicial reasoning. Um, the what uh, in what we may do in the sort of in the in the in the project of uh, uh, for feminism and the sort of the project of equality of law, uh, and uh, it has also this pro this kind of project has found an excellent uh, resonance in classroom teaching because uh, critical and you know classes constitutional law classes family law constitutional law you know, critical legal theory feminist legal theory these classes have benefited a lot from using the these judgments so there is definitely a pedagogical uh, import, import importance of uh, these judgments so uh, the uh, out of the 40 uh, judgments we are uh, i mean there's uh, like like i said it is a diversity and uh, we are for example we are rewriting uh, something like we are rewriting mathura judgment we, we are we are actually rewriting three uh, rape law judgments, uh, starting from Mathura, which was of course like one of those watershed moments in the Indian women's movement and Indian feminists' uh, engagement with law. Uh, we, we are rewriting Raja versus State uh, of Karnataka, which is a post 2013 uh, uh, amendment judgment. Uh, and we are also rewriting the Mahmud Faruqi versus uh, State as well, which 
kind of the original judgment completely turned the definition of consent on its head so uh, so that's like definitely one of the one of the things that we uh, seek to correct uh, in addition to that we are also uh, rewriting a bunch of uh, constitutional law public law judgments uh, you know some of those judgments which are uh, usually paraded as good judgments, uh, for example, the Air India versus Nargesh Mirza case, uh, or for that matter, the Gita Hariharan case. What these uh, cases, uh, what these judgments, the original judgments have done is uh, they have they failed to articulate. Uh, you know, an expansive uh, 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 definition of uh, of gender justice uh, in the in the constitution. So that's something that we are trying to uh, correct. Uh, uh, then uh, we are also rewriting. Uh, 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 we are like as recent uh, one of the very recent judges, Rajbala versus uh, State of Haryana, uh, because uh, it, because it's uh, again one of those judgments which was kind of seen as a good judgment because it advanced uh, you know the claim that education uh, is required for all uh, you know education is something that ed education is the only thing that makes that's what the judgment said makes some someone uh, differentiate good from bad uh, in, and uh, what it uh, essentially did was by giving that sort of an articulation for education as uh, as the 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 most essential thing in order to contest uh, panchayati raj uh, in pancha panchayat election uh, it actually disenfranchised ended up in disenfranchising a large number of women who are from and, and people from the marginalized communities because not everyone has access to education so uh, that's uh, another judgment that we are uh, trying to do we are also doing a bunch of corporate law and tax law uh, judgments uh, and uh, we are also doing a range of matrimonial law judgments starting from uh, the Velu Sami uh, case to uh, Rajesh Sharma versus uh, State of UP where it's the 498A case uh, where the court uh, said that uh, you know that, that essentially women misuse laws and family welfare committees must be set up uh, to screen uh, complaints of uh, 498A. Uh, and uh, we are very glad uh, to be partnering with uh, Leaflet for this because uh, this is a project which also needs a certain kind of audience and, uh, the, and Leaflet will help us in reaching out to the audience in the academy, in media as well as to the judiciary and legal profession. Thank you.